This video is brought to you by StoneAgeGamer.com. It's where you can pick up cool items like the Powerbase Mini Converter. It's where you can play Sega Master System games on your Sega Genesis. So be sure to check out StoneAgeGamer.com. Link below. Hey guys, how's it going? This is John with Gamester81.com. This episode, I'll be reviewing the brand new uh, Intellivision Flashback. This is by App Games. Uh, they've got a number of other consoles I just reviewed recently, the ColecoVision Flashback. I'll put a link here, you guys can check that out. I also have reviewed some Atari Flashback consoles as well as a Sega Genesis Flashback. And what these are, are basically plug and play consoles with built-in games you can play for the classic consoles. And what I have in front of me is actually the limited edition version of the system. Uh, these are available at you know Toys R Us, you can get them at Dollar Tree, you can get them pretty much anywhere, Walmart, online, of course, Amazon. Retails for 40 US dollars. There are 60 built-in games for it, so if you think about it, it's less than a dollar game. It's like 75 cents a game or so. It's a really good deal, um, and it actually plays really well. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna open it up, just compare it to the original television, and then we're gonna plug it in, and you can kind of see how the graphics are. But what makes this one in front of me unique is it's limited to 200. This one is 98 out of 200, as stated on the back here. And this is what they call the Blue Sky Rangers edition. So I got this at the Classic Gaming Expo, which is where you could only pick this up. And a lot of the guys who programmed for the Intellivision were there and they signed it for me. So that's pretty cool. So it comes with a unique sleeve. I'm gonna take the sleeve off. I'm gonna show you what the system looks like normally. And it looks like this. Still like, love the package actually. And what's really unique about the Intellivision itself, the system when it came out, it came out in late 79, uh, test marketed, and it officially came out in 1980. And it was really the first system to really give Atari its run for its money as far as competition in the gaming industry. There were other systems like the Odyssey 2 and other ones that came out uh, during this time before, but this is the one that really, uh, really put a lot of pressure on Atari, uh, for example. And there were a lot of great games for the Intellivision. Altogether, there were 125 games, this comes with 60, so you're getting pretty much half the library. However, not only are you gonna get 60 games, you're also getting a state in the back here. You're getting three Intel, IntelliVoice games, which are, they have a voice in the game. And uh, that may not sound like a big deal today, but back then that was, that was huge. This is the very first system to ever have speech in the system. And what you needed is an IntelliVoice adapter in order to actually hear the, the voice through the adapter. Uh, and this is actually built in, so that's pretty cool. Um, and it also comes with uh, six unreleased games that never came out officially for the Intellivision. So that's pretty cool, really classic system. And what's what's interesting about the Intellivision itself is it's actually considered the first 16-bit system. Now I know what you're thinking, uh, John, how's that possible? Really, the, you know, you think of 16-bit, you think of Super Nintendo, Genesis, TurboGrafx-16, which came out years after uh, this came out. Well, as far as bits go, graphics go, yeah, this is definitely not 16-bit, but however, it does have a 16-bit microprocessor in the Intellivision, so it is considered 16-bit. So when the Intellivision first came out, uh, hit the shelves in 1980, uh, it retailed for 299 US dollars, about 300 bucks. So that seems like a lot today, of course, but back in 1980, if you include inflation, this thing cost 860 US dollars or more. So if you include inflation, so it was really, really expensive. Uh, it came with, I believe, a packing game with like Blackjack, so one of those games like that. So uh, pretty cool. It did fairly well. Three million of these were sold. In addition to, as I mentioned, the first system to have speech, it also was the first uh, controller to have 16 directional, so you can have a 16 directional controller. It also was the first uh, system to have downloadable games. That's right, there's actually a, a thing called the play cable. You could actually download a game into the Intellivision back in the day. Now the problem is there's no internal memory, so once the system turned off, the game was basically erased. But that was pretty high tech for early mid 80s. That's pretty cool that you could actually download games. Other systems did it with like the Sega channel later on as well, but this was the first one to do it. Uh, let's open this up, take a closer look, and then we're gonna compare it to the Intellivision. Let me know what you guys think of the system itself. If you plan on getting one, again, for 40 bucks, not a bad deal. Let's take a closer look. So I'm gonna open this up, and for, before I do that, I wanna show you a closer look at the box. Uh, it does come with some overlays, which are limited edition, which is pretty sweet. Uh, so like the ColecoVision flashback, uh, the Intellivision also had overlays, so some games required overlays so you know which buttons you're pushing, of course. Uh, and it's got the authentic design controllers. Now the controllers were, are not programmed to work with anything other than the flashback. So just like the ColecoVision flashback, you can't plug these controllers into an Intellivision uh, Model 2 or whatever and make it work. Unfortunately, their buttons are not programmed correctly, so one could be up or it just doesn't make sense, okay? Unfortunately. 
Now the original Intellivision actually have white controllers that are wired in, so that won't work out for obvious reasons. But here's a closer look at the front, and it comes with 60 built-in games. Again, not a bad deal. Um, and the overlays just go right into the controller. I'll show you how that works in a second. Here are the different games. Nice list in the back. Shows you exactly uh, what this is, what comes included. Now, I don't know if these are available in Europe or even Canada. I don't think so. I think they're only available in the States, but correct me if I'm wrong. If you know for sure, please leave a comment and let me know. Uh, these are different games, a lot of different variety, which I like. You have boxing, you have Vegas Poker and Blackjack, which was the original built-in game. Football, uh, soccer, a lot of sports titles, of course, but you got Space Battle, Space Hawk, um, you got Sub Hunt. So you have a variety of different games, which is great. You got some adventure games, you have some space games. Uh, of course, you have some sports games as well. Um, so, you know, boxing is always classic. So I think good, nice variety of, of games for sure. And uh, let's open this up. Pretty lightweight box. Oh, there's tape here. Let me open that up. One second. Okay, so there's a sticker there. We fix that here. Open it up. Voila. So you got an instruction manual. Pretty easy how to set it up. You pretty much turn it on, plug it in, turn it on. It works through AV cables. Doesn't doesn't have an RF switch or anything like that. That's nice. So these are different overlays. Quite a bit different overlay. So, so I guess I'm not I'm sure how many overlays actually come included with this, but that show you every overlay for every game that is included in this little set. So that is always nice. So you know what to to push, how to play the games, uh, brief instructions. Pretty easy to set up. Pretty self-explanatory. Here's the system itself. Pretty lightweight. Got the AV, and this is actually connected to it. Okay, so it just has a uh, yellow and white. There's no red. All right. And it doesn't have an HDMI or anything like that, okay? These are the overlays. Comes a little, let's take this little thing off. You got Astro Smash, Buzz Bomber, Crown of Kings, Minotaur, Night Stalker, Space Spartans, Space Hawk, Utopia, Baseball, and Word Fun. So for two of each, one for each remote or controller. Uh, here is the AC adapter, always important to have. This is what the controller looks like. Actually, it looks like, from the naked eye, it looks just like the Intellivision controller from the original system. Here's the disc, six and directional disc, different buttons. It does feel like a normal controller. That is pretty sweet. And these actually plug into the front like so. It's got a nine pin uh, port here, so that, that's pretty neat. This is your power. So this lights up when it's on, you have to reset. And this is where your AC adapter plugs into. Other than that, that's pretty much all you need. Very, very lightweight though. I'm surprised how light it is. So I think it will be as well. Here's the second controller. One thing I want to show you is these are two, these are the action buttons on the side. And these are the overlays. So let me just show you how the overlays go in to it. They actually just slide in like so. This is Astro Smash. So this is hyperspace, auto fire, single shot. So you know exactly what to push. That's important. These actually feel pretty authentic. That's pretty neat. Uh, let's compare this to the original Intellivision. Now this is the Model 1 because this is what the flashback is really modeled to look after, right? So significantly bigger, the original console, of course. The Intellivision flashback does not play cards. I just want to clarify that. Here's what the, the controller looks like. Let's control size, compare sizes. And pretty much identical as far as size. I know the ClecoVision one was a slightly smaller. Pretty good. Looks like even the molds are pretty similar. The screws, they got everything right. Fortunately, they're not programmed to work with each other's systems, which is unfortunate. So hopefully on the Intellivision Flashback 2, they'll fix that. So that is interesting. Let me see if the overlays will work on this controller. And they do. So unlike the ColecoVision one, these actually do work on so that is, that is nice, that is that's great. You also can get a joystick like this and it makes it a little easier to control. I'm not a huge fan of the disc, although it's kind of interesting. But yeah, on and off right here, uh, reset. Same thing as here, power is a button this time, there's a reset with the wood grain panel. And the controllers actually are different because they actually, these are hardwired in as I mentioned before, and they just plug in, they just kind of lay here on the side. And, you know, this is obviously too small, so there's no room to put the controllers, but Overall, really cool. If you're a big fan of the Intellivision or if you want to check out the Intellivision and you want to purchase the system itself, you're probably looking to get in the Intellivision flashback 
get 60 bumping games for it. Um, and I'm sure they're going to come out with other flashbacks. But let's check out some gameplay and kind of go from there. And then I'm going to share my final thoughts. So when you turn on the system, you get to the menu here. And I'm not a big fan of this. This is the same layout as a ColecoVision one. To get to different pages, you have to push left and right. That's fine. But to get to these games, you have to push up and down different columns. So it's kind of confusing at first. Not a major deal. Just I think they could have laid it out a little bit easier. This is Astro Smash. This is kind of a mixture between Asteroids by Atari and like Galaga in some way. Because it's a shooter. And you're, obviously, oh, you're supposed to destroy these asteroids falling from the sky and not let them hit the ground. But when you hit the bigger ones, they break up just like in Asteroids. But you don't want that to get to zero points, you die. And if you get hit by these... You die. It does get very challenging later on. A lot of fun. This is Bomb Squad. Makes good use of the Intellivoice. Uh, and this is a very unique game. I've never seen a game quite like this. The object is you have a half hour and you have to defuse a bomb. And they give you several tools to do that. But you have to kind of go and, and figure out what's wrong with this bomb. And if you don't do it in a half hour, uh, the bomb explodes. But really good use of siren noise and everything like that. Really cool. This is one of the unreleased games. This is Brickout. Clone of Breakout by Atari, pretty much. And actually, the disc works really well with this, the controller. Uh, and this actually breakout, the original one, was designed by Steve Wozniak, who went on to work for Apple, helped create the Apple II, among other things. So pretty cool trivia fact. This is Pinball. I want to show you this example of Pinball because this is actually a beautiful game as far as graphically. At the time, you can see the good use of color. Actually, the, the mechanics, play mechanics, work really well in this as well with the gravity and stuff like that. I think it's just a really fun game, Pinball game. And compared to Pinball for Atari 2600, this definitely blows it away. And it shows you why this was such a popular system back in the day. Here's Space Cadet. This is another unreleased game. This is kind of a weird uh, game as well. It's a two-player game. You choose how many seconds you have or how many minutes you want to play as. And basically, you, have, uh, you play against another person here. And it's kind of like Warlords in the sense that you have to destroy the other person's planet by, by basically shooting stars at them and avoiding, like... The, the, this whatever it is flying around this in orbit it's a very very challenging game this is tower of doom i wanted to show you this game because this is one of the adventure games for the intellivision on the flashback and you can choose your different character your different level and then you can also choose what character archer warrior knight there's a barbarian i'll do the barbarian and you can see good use of the graphics good use of color here and this is a really challenging game in the sense that it's kind of a maze game you have different weapons that you can use, but you really can't see where you're going. Uh, on the top left corner there, there's a map, but yeah, these are the games I just wanted to show you. So here's my final thoughts. So overall, what do I think about the Intellivision flashback system? Uh, I think for $40, really, it's a good deal. Uh, you get 60 great games, I like the variety. Uh, the fact that it comes with three Intellivoice games, it comes with six of the games that have never been released before, that's pretty sweet. I do like the controllers, um, because they do feel like the original Intellivision controllers, unlike the ColecoVision flashback. I feel like those controllers could be a lot better. These definitely feel and have the feel for the Intellivision controller. Having said that, I'm not a huge fan of the Intellivision controller, to be honest with you. The disc to get around and navigate to the menu can be kind of tricky. I'll put, try to push down and might go left or right by mistake just because it's 16 directional. But overall, I think it's a really good deal. Let me know what you guys think. I'm sure on the Intellivision Flashback 2, they'll include even more games. Um, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate you guys subscribing, of course, leaving a comment. If you guys want to stay in touch, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, as well as my website, GameStreet81.com. We'll see you guys soon. Take care. Happy gaming.